right now at 30 seconds to four. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, gentlemen, I'd like to, uh, I'd like for you to uh, approve the minutes of November 5th, please. So Make a motion we'll... to approve the minutes of the November 5th regular board of selectmen's meeting. Okay. And Greg, you agree? Yes, I do. As do I. They're approved. Okay. Um, look at this, how timing. You gentlemen, I believe, have an application or letter from Ms. Saradzizic. And for those that do not know her, uh, she is uh, teaches at the academy, very involved in the community, very involved with students in the community, has done some terrific things uh, on behalf of the academy with students, and uh, recently has been doing a lot of work with the Arboretum. And she's applying to be appointed as a full member of the Arboretum Committee. So. Gentlemen, um, how do you feel about that? I, I move we do it. Okay. I agree. And uh, Sarah, I'd just like to say thanks for your attached letter. A lot of times we just get people that fill in the blanks and a little explanation, especially since I've never met you, is helpful. So thank you very much for that. And I agree also. And Sarah, thank you for your willingness to be involved and your dedication to well, your dedication in, in your various positions for the school. Um, always impressed and uh, very impressed with your students and their dedication to community service, volunteerism, and that sort of thing. So thank you for your willingness to, uh, to serve on this committee. Thank you. Thank you for letting me. Okay. Gentlemen. So you um, vote on that, right? Uh, yes. You moved. I moved it. So all right, Chan. I'm in. All right, you second. I'll third. All in favor? Unanimous. Aye aye. Okay. Good. Thank you, um, gentlemen. Not to belabor the issue, and you're all wondering, having looked at the consider revising the 2021 transfer station permit to run on a calendar year not fiscal. I know what you're thinking, why are we doing this? And I know that it was in the minutes, we had a lot of discussion at our last meeting. Let me explain what's going on and, and why I reached, actually uh, I did send you emails, I believe one night to explain what the issue was. Um, what the issue is this, we're trying to get the transfer station on a fiscal year. Um, this has been going on forever. Um, it's on a calendar year. It creates problems for John Navarro in figuring out budgets, in figuring out hauling and tipping fees, and a variety of other issues with the um, transfer station. So after we did all of our work two weeks ago, um, I decided to pull the plug on it. And, and the reason is this, people are gonna show up, it, people are gonna get excited, and they're gonna get their new, um, they're gonna pay and they're gonna get their new brochure and they're gonna be all excited because of how inexpensive it is. <laughs> then what's gonna happen is they're gonna show up six months later. What do you mean? I, I just paid the fee. Well, yes, ma'am, it's for six months. I always pay for a year, why is it? Anyway, it's gonna to be too confusing. The other problem is they're gonna realize this at the time that they come uh, around the first week of July to pay their taxes on motor vehicles. So it's kind of a double whammy um, and it's, it's not gonna go over well. So we also do not know because we're not in our budget season yet, what may happen next year. We've had three years of level uh, taxes to the town, very unusual. We've kept it at the 20.5 uh, mill rate. So I figured, what? 24.5 isn't it? Uh, yeah, what did I say? 20. Oh, 24.5. Okay, so I just, I, I was thinking about this one night and I said, this is not gonna work. This is not the year to do it. So what I'd like to go back to is the original figures uh, that we had figured out, which I believe you have a copy, do you not? On the 12 month figures? Somewhere. I, are they in your folders? No, it's not in the folder. 
No, but okay. it, but it's in the it's in the folder from the last meeting, I think. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to pull that out from the November fifth meeting. Look, if you oh. look in there, it might be in there. Okay. Uh, Jay, is it because you're concerned that there might be an increase in taxes this coming no. year? Oh, that's part of it. Okay, because I guess I guess my point is this has been talked about forever, and it's going to be it's it's going to make people angry one year or another year. This may not be the year to do it. And the reason, honest to goodness, the reason, one of the reasons I say this is COVID. And the reason I say that is we at the town hall and in the town of Woodstock, we're dealing with the second surge. It's creating major problems with the schools. It's creating major problems with restaurants. It's just another stressor for taxpayers. And that's one of my concerns. And I don't, between us, I don't see next year as being any better. I know that they are, I, I had information at a meeting I was at the other day that um, there will be a vaccine available in late December. Um, there will be a priority for emergency workers. Um, we, in our geographic area, I do not believe we're gonna have access to the Pfizer vaccine. And the reason for that is the Pfizer vaccine has to be stored at an extremely low temperature. And we do not have in, in Eastern Connecticut, the facilities to store that. There would have to be special freezers purchased to do that. So the other vaccine, and I, I apologize, I don't have the name for it. Uh, but again, if you watch the news any night, you, you can find out what it is. Jay, it's Moderna. Moderna, okay, thanks, Greg. Um, Anyway, I think that's what we're going to have available to us. Um, they're looking at the end of December. But Chan, getting back to your initial comment about possibility of taxes going up, we just don't know. It's, it, it, we are going to have to switch over, and John and I agree on this. I'm just not sure that this is the year to do it. OK, well, if, if you want to go back to the other program, I'm OK with that for this cycle. But when it comes to budget time, uh, Let's have this conversation again and make sure that we try and budget accordingly moving forward to make the switch next year. Okay. Yes. That would, that would be this time next year? Something like yes. that? Yes. Yes. Well, we have to make the, um, there would have to be a transition. It would have to be initially a six month period and then go to 12 months fiscally. Right. Um, but I know it's human nature. People are going to come in and be all excited about um, what a deal this is, and they're not going to read it. We, Brenda and I were going back and forth on how to have the print done in such a way so that when you look at the cover, it tells you it's only for six months. Um, and I, we know darn right well it, 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 it's, it's going to happen that people are going to be extremely angry when they realize. And then we're going to be accused of taking advantage of them. And they think that, you know, we, we were trying to pull a fast one, which is not true. We're looking out for their best interests, but by the same token, I can tell you the expenses of um, the uh, tipping fees and the hauling fees for the town keep going up every year. One of the other problems is um, it, it, at some point in the past, we used to make money. We didn't make a big profit but we could sell plastic, we could sell uh, tin cans, we could sell paper. Those days are gone. And um, we do, I believe there is some materials that come out of our transfer station that we do receive remuneration for. But there's a, um, for instance, the plastic that used to go overseas, nobody wants it anymore. So we're stuck with it. And, and we're, in, we're in the process of dealing with a program with DEP on um, trying to get rid of bulky waste and also plastics because it's going to be with us, you know, forever. Anyway, I, you know, I could go on for a while, but it was just when I sent you gentlemen that email the other night, it was like, you know, what are we doing and why are we doing? And that's why I explained it to you in the email. So. So do we need a motion? Uh, yes, I yes, we do need a motion that we will cont we will um, go with the increase in fees, but for the um, 21-22, uh, I'm sorry, 
for, for calendar 21. 2021 uh, year, we will go with the increase in fees. It's, 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 just, it's just the calendar 21. Yes. Right? Not 2021. So, no, no, it's 21. Well, it's 2021. I mean, 2021. Oh, 20, yeah, 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 yeah. I was right. thinking 20 hyphen 21. No, 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 no. 2021 that year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So next I'm, year, January to December. I'm with you. Okay. okay. Gotcha. I, I, I do need to someone to move on that in I'll a second. That. Okay, Greg, so move. Chan? I'm in. Okay, me too. And I apologize because, um, well, actually, I was thinking you guys didn't put that much time into this. So I guess I'm apologizing myself because uh, Brenda and Crystal and myself, um, <laughs> this was a major project and uh, I just threw it out the window for the best of good reasons. So, okay, let's move on. Um, you'll be happy about this, gentlemen. We have no tax rebates. Good. Okay, um, correspondence and announcements. Okay, uh, in your folders, you will see um, there's two graphics. Uh, one I got off of, uh, or actually Crystal got off of uh, Connecticut uh, website. And these are things that five, this is primarily for restaurants and uh, places that deal with the public. Five precautions we're taking to protect you, five actions you can take to protect us. So I've taken that, brochure, that brochure, if you will, along with a sheet that came from the Hartford Current last Sunday that shows coronavirus in Connecticut and the sources of community clusters. Um, and if you notice, number one is restaurants. And then it goes on down the line. Anyway, we put this together as a brochure and I've been visiting various restaurants and um, places open to the public over the last couple of weeks, talking to people, talking, giving them suggestions for design of their dining rooms, um, what to remove from bars, um, how to set up every other table, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just because we're in a spike right now, I'm afraid it's gonna get worse. Um, I was speaking to uh, Polly Hayden this morning at Sweet Evs. She is concerned and asked me is the governor going to um, shut us down again? And I honestly, I don't have an answer for that, but I'm concerned because if you look at nationwide uh, maps, um, everybody is in the same boat and it's not good. So this, uh, the, the graphics I gave you, I just felt it gave me a way to come in and talk to uh, various owners in town. And I'm trying to be supportive of them and I'm on their side, but they've also said to me that some of these graphics, they're gonna be posting uh, in their um, places of business for their employees to pay attention. Um, and it gives them some firm guidelines. Most, we've been very fortunate. Most people, in, everybody in town has been very proactive, whether it's um, Linda Osier or the Haydens or others. And they've been terrific through this whole thing. But. I'm just trying to prevent problems down the road because uh, we have been very fortunate in town. Um, okay, under, also um, this is correspondence. Uh, Greg, this is specific to you, but all of us, I just, uh, you get a copy of a letter I followed up with a uh, report that I, I had followed up on a letter that Mike Alberts had sent. I had sent a follow-up last January and um, this, regarding, this is regarding the lights down at uh, 171, 169. Yep. Um, and you, you can see from the letter, they've got it on their radar. Um, the project is anticipated to be, to be completed design in 2023. Uh, we were told that we'd be part of the design phase. Um, so anyway, that's just a follow up on things that we've talked about in the past. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, also, you get a letter, uh, a letter, you get a list. We're going to go to a uh, public auction. Um, and I can't tell you the date. Um, so if you want an 11 foot Viking plow, 
uh, with a power angle for your own home, you'll be invited or you'll know when this uh, auction is going to take place. These are the things that surplus equipment from the town garage. Um, John and I have been going back and forth and we'll be announcing soon. This will be advertised uh, soon um, to get rid of this, this equipment that we no longer need. Is this going to be an online auction, Jay? I do not know. I, I honestly, I don't know. Now, if it's in person, I would assume A, it's going to be at the town garage and B, uh, they're going to have to uh, do proper, uh, you know, masks and social distance and that sort of thing. But I don't know. John didn't mention online, so I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm sure part of the part of any any auction, whether it's online or, or in person, includes a period when the uh, potential bidders could inspect the equipment. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. But again, I you know I don't know. Other than John came up with the list, we talked about it yesterday. He gave it to Brenda, and then I think it has to be advertised, and I'm not sure. Um, you know what the regulations are as far as advertising you know but so many days before it has to be in you know so many papers i i don't know but if any of you are interested in that 11 foot viking plow when the ads come out i'll let you know when it is actually you can own two that's true <laughs> you're you're right um okay that's that's what i have pretty much for uh, announcement and correspondence, but I may have forgotten something. Oh, didn't I send the email out on that? Okay. Uh, I No, I, I sent an email to you gentlemen about no town meeting and I left a phone message at the home of Ms. Dawn. So I, okay. Um, Wait, hold on. Sorry. No, 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 go ahead. So, are we doing it by Zoom? Is that how? No. Zoom what? Like a Zoom. I mean, I mean the executive order. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. And again, this is for the public. Again, the two selectmen and Don know this. Um, for the general public, and I don't. The general public didn't know that we were planning a town meeting, so I don't have to make an announcement to the general public. It was our, you know, we had been talking about it because of the need for it. But again, as I told you in the email, which I neglected to bring a copy with me, um, but as I told you in the email, this was through research we had done in consultation with Rich Roberts, that most of the things that we had to do, uh, and this was development rights to the farm and some other things, most could be done uh, under executive orders, which have also been, um, which had also been, um, um, we, we just didn't feel, again, with this spike in COVID, that it was a smart thing to have a, a town meeting in person in, you know, in mid-December. So, and I'm, I'm looking, I was just handed, um, this just came in nine minutes ago. Today's Thursday. We went from orange back to red. We were orange. I was thrilled. We went to red. Uh, then we went back to orange and then we went back to yellow when I was all excited, but I've just been handed a map. The whole state, other than a few towns here and there, uh, is red. And again, this just, you know, I'm just saying to you, th these are my concerns about town meetings, why I'm visiting restaurants, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, and I, you know, I, I express to anybody that will listen that my personal issues with this is people are um, either lazy or they're not taking it uh, seriously enough. And we've had issues, as you're all aware, of students from the academy. The academy was going back to two days a week. And they, they were in, the students at the academy were uh, in on Monday. Uh, and then they pulled the plug on Tuesday because apparently there was a party in Pomfret and a uh, number of students were out there, no masks, no social distancing. And there are a number of students from Woodstock and NFA and Killingly that apparently got together at a soiree south of us, uh, again, with no uh, precautions. And, um, you know, it's with us, it's going to stay with us. And unfortunately, I'm afraid it's going to get worse. So, um, 
there you have it. Um, okay, um, public comments, please. Don? I, yes, I just want to um, I just want to thank you all um, for the the great amount of work you did to figure out the best way and the safest way to proceed with the the town's authorization of the release of the funds to purchase the development rights of Maplecrest. So so th thank you for that. I notified um, Cam Weimer, who's the director of the Farmland Preservation Program with the Department of Agriculture, and um, and he was very encouraged and he said that's great the sooner the vote can take place the better um so so th thank you for making this happen you're welcome and, and again don as i told you uh throughout this whole process it was a priority for us yeah but, but again we god we you know it's not business as usual no, and, no, not for any of us. <laughs> but, right. but if you would like the Open Space Committee um, in general, or me in particular, to do anything, to release any statements, to um, you know, contact the press to say how much uh, we appreciate your going forward with this, um, just, just let us know. You can let us know through Chan, since he's an active member of the committee, and um, we'll do what, what, what needs to be done. All right, thank you. We'll uh, we'll let you know as this develops. I think the yeah. intent right now is that we will address this at the first meeting in December. Okay. Along with some other issues that we're going to do, and you know, we're going to address under uh, executive orders. A number of the other issues that I had, and I think I've expressed to all of you at some point, I had like eleven uh, items that normally go to a um, town meeting. And um, I think we've kind of whittled them down to eight and a number of those can wait until we can actually have an, um, a town meeting, uh, be it in the spring or whatever. But again, uh, you know, listen, don't bet on it. And, and as much as we're all hopeful, I, I don't think next year is gonna be much better than this year. I but, agree, Jay, but I would, at this point, I would like to just concentrate on the time sensitive issues. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, and, and I had already talked to you um, after we made this decision not to have a town meeting, but to move forward, especially for the uh, release of funds. Um, I had uh, contacted Mike Doherty and I told him what we were doing. And I said that we will address this in our first uh, meeting of December. I know, and I can't, I want to say December 7th or 6th, the Board of Finance has a meeting. Uh, the 8th, sure, December sure 8th. No, yeah. yeah, it's the 8th. Okay, so we will address, we will do our, we've already approved, so it's just a formality. And then, I, but I've already told Mike, and so that it will be ready for your first meeting, if you will, in November, or your monthly meeting in November. December. December, December. I'm sorry. It's okay. So, yeah. All right, so we should be good. Does this have to be warned or posted like a standard town meeting, even though it's going to be done under the executive order? I do not believe so. Because, it, but we do have to cite in minutes and in any publication, I think we have to cite is under executive order XYZ, you know, we are doing this, this uh, situation. I'm looking at a thing right now from Rich Roberts. Um, Okay, now this is this is from Rich. I'm quoting him, um, he, and this is an email that we we just received. Uh, looking at the executive orders, I would suggest that notices uh, of the proposed actions get posted on the website in advance. So we will be posting on the town website, but I do not think that we have to go to um, like legal notices in a newspaper and that sort of thing. I think just town website would be fine. I, I might check that with Rich. He uses that term posted to mean legal. Okay. Not, not the way um, we, not the way you and I might use it. He uses it in a, a legal fashion. Okay. We'll follow up with him. But again, um, Chan and Don, th this, um, that open space situation and that, um, um, you know, development rights, it's a priority for us and we recognize it. So we're trying to do everything we can. And, and the committee, the committee recognizes that the the board of selectmen are fully in support of this, 
um, and have been working hard to, to move things forward. So mm -hmm. again, thank you. Um, okay. The committee does know we did, um, I did let people know at our regular November meeting that you were planning a town meeting. Um, right. And so I will let the committee know that that plan has been changed and that you're going to do this um, at a regular BOS meeting and that they should should zoom in so that they can see it happen. Okay. And I will let the, and I will let the landowner know as well. Okay, thank you. Jay, Charlene. I, I'm really glad that this has been clarified this way because I was really concerned that we were thinking of having a town meeting when the governor's mandates were that people couldn't have gatherings of more than X number of people in their own home or in their own property. And the thought that you might have to enforce that and at the same time hold a public town meeting on the other hand, I thought was going to be a whole barrel full of trouble. So kudos. <laughs> Actually, Charlene, this, this is uh, the issue. If you have a party at your house, you are limited to the number of people. These, that limitation by the government governor does not apply to municipalities. And in fact, there was a town meeting in Western Connecticut. I cannot remember the town. I think it was Bristol, come to think of it. There was a town meeting on an athletic field and um, they held it because they had to do it for whatever reason, but they used the PA system and they had people spread out in chairs all over an athletic field. Um, so yeah, but I just, again, you know, doing the right thing, I guess, in the sense that um, we are not bound by what the, um, the municipalities are not bound by what the citizens are for like private parties, weddings and that sort of thing. But by the same token, I recognize the, the danger and the significance of, of people being together, so. We just decided. I also think you've been very sensitive about the situation with residents having to pay for the transfer station permit and then their property taxes and that kind of thing. Even if it was totally above board, I think this would have been an opportunity for a great deal of misunderstanding. And I, I think that it's so much better that it's handled this way. Charlene, do you mean um, what? You, do you mean it, there would have been a lot of misunderstanding because of the six month and then going to the 12 month? No, I meant that <clears throat> your sensitivity about the timing on the transfer station permit. Oh, okay. I think, I mean, even though it could have been perfectly above board and fine, you were very sensitive to the way people might take it. That's my point in the town meeting versus, you know, private okay. gatherings thing. It doesn't matter if it's above board or not. People would misunderstand and we really don't need to have a big hassle over it. I understand, thank you. Jay, would it be possible to put together some kind of a, a sheet to include in this year's dump permits, explaining that it's probably gonna happen next year, maybe try and prepare people for what's coming down the pike? Uh, I don't wanna put an extra burden on everybody, but if no, it's- No, 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 no. I, I think we could do it. My fear is this, since it's just us together here, my fear is this, no matter what we do, people aren't going to get it. And again, Brenda and I went back and forth for days trying to figure out how to put it on the brochure so that people would understand it's only six months. And Chan, you're, I, I agree with you. And yes, we can do that. I just think that people don't read things. <laughs> oh, well, at least, no, at least no. you're, doing your, you're doing your due diligence by giving them a, a heads up. Um, and then they'll get another heads up when they go to get the permit the following year. So, you know, you, that's about all you can do. I know, but I, I um, yeah, yes, we will do that and answer your question. I just don't have a lot of faith in people reading, you know, reading things, you know, I, I, but yes, we will do that. Can't hurt. Oh, absolutely. Do they, Jay? Yeah. Do, do Greg. refresh me here. Do they, do the town send out a renewal to the people that have a dump permit or do you just put a, a notice out there that dump permits are now available? 
Greg, Greg, and I had Greg. One. <laughs> You've never had one? I had no, no. I have one. I don't oh. remember. I don't remember if I got a renewal in the mail. No, Greg. We don't send renewals. Right. Okay. I will. I will personally call your house if you wish yeah. to remind you. No, sir. I'm. I'm. All right. I'm, no, seriously. No, we don't do renewals. All right. But it, but it, but the but the thing that Chan's talking about, you could actually go in the tax bills too. Just it's just so, an informational thing about the dump, the transfer station. No, I understand that, but I don't want to put the tax bills, you know, with with increase the cost of postage. Okay. What I think we will probably do, in right. addition to putting it on the brochure, as Chan suggested, um, that you know there will be. We are going to transition next year and explain. We we don't want to get into fees because we don't know, but I think we'll put it on the town website and and the town Facebook page. We'll try to get the information out there. But you know, Greg, seriously, we I've enforced this as a as a constable and I've been at the transfer station and it, it's calendar year and we give people the month of January as a grace period, just because we're right. nice people. And yet that, that people correct. think it does it's not due till Jan till February first. And I always explain nicely that, do you remember when the ball dropped and you opened the champagne and everybody was singing? That's when the dump station, uh, when the dump sticker is due. But people go, well, you know, this and, or, you know, we've had people that come in in uh, March. I forgot, you know, and it just, it's painful. Anyway. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, any other public comments? Is Diane still there? Diane Miller, you're there. I don't see you, but uh, welcome. I'm here. That's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> A stealth person. Um, okay. Any 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 other comments from the board? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlene. Oh, you're waving at Diane. You're muted. I'm sorry, I was muted. I was just waving hello to Diane. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. There she is. How are you? Um, okay. Uh, public or or uh, board? Any anything else? We've got everything I was into covered. Okay. What was that? I didn't hear any what issues that I had have been addressed already. All right. I, I wanted to mention something. I'd be disappointed if you didn't. There you go. Well, it, it's actually a community announcement, but I think you'd be happy to know this. And I want to, first of all, thank, if Crystal's present, I thank Crystal um, for her help with getting stuff posted on the town website about, about this. The fire department held its annual toy collection last Saturday. And that, that toys go to children all over not only Woodstock but other communities as well they we raised um 1800 more than 1800 toys were donated that broke the old record by 700 toys and ten thousand dollars in cash was donated and that broke the record by two thousand dollars so significant accomplishment a great community feel good story and they deal with schools and other organizations to distribute the toys to to children and the money the cash donations are used to purchase additional toys so it's going to make you going to make you live wish you were six again jay <laughs> i appreciate that announcement and uh, i'm really glad to hear the, the numbers that's fantastic and uh, i'm wondering maybe if it's a reflection on the way times are everybody's having a hard time and if well, they've got a little extra, they're passing it along, which is just a good, that's a, that's good a comment good about the community. That's a good point, Jan. And, and actually, it was it was stated in some of the advance um, stuff that we did to promote the, the event um, that, that this was a t going to be a tough year for many families. And so people were, were invited and urged to step forward with it. And, and I'd be remiss if I didn't um, comment on, on commend the, the efforts to it's a team that did the work. It's a greatly a great team of, of volunteers. 
but led by Iris Arsenault, who's an EMT with the EMS division of the fire department. She just is unbelievable, relentless in all the stuff that she does. And, 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 and she deserves really, really kudos for that. And the other thing that's worth mentioning is Sarah is not here now, right? Too bad. I, I but, think she left. Yeah, but we had m more than two dozen guys, I didn't see any girls there, guys from the academy, from the football team, walked down the hill to the fire department and every single one of them had a mask on and every single one of them had a toy. They don't wow. Even, that, that was impressive. Really, yeah. really impressive. Coot, salute to Woodstock Academy, um, the student athletes that, that did that. That was wonderful. And of course, That's the adult leaders that, you know, probably helped them get motivated to go do it. The coaches and, and, and all that, so. I was very impressed. I saw Iris's pictures on uh, Woodstock Proud. Yeah. Uh, she had a lot of photographs, so I was extremely impressed with the records that were broken for yeah. the number of toys donated and also the amount of money donated. Yeah. And as Jan said, again, I think this may be a reflection of the times because um, it's amazing talking to people who, um, uh, people that have lost their jobs, been furloughed, whatever. And again, it all goes back to, to COVID, unfortunately. Yep. Yep. So it's a feel good story anyway. So we can end the meeting on that if you want. Okay. Can I, um, w would somebody uh, move that we uh, adjourn? So sure. Move. Yeah. Jan, go ahead. All right. So move and Greg, second? Sure. Okay. I'll third it. Thank you all for joining us. And, uh, uh, I, I think we, we did some good things today. Uh, some meetings are very mundane, but I'm, I'm very happy as is Dawn uh, for what we're going to do with that farm. And uh, I'm glad to hear Chan about the fire department and how successful that was. So, okay, gentlemen and ladies, uh, until next time. And listen, all of you have a terrific Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.